first to you, Heather. Lindsey Boylan, one of the former aides who has come forth to accuse Governor Cuomo of sexual misconduct, said the governor would ridicule other female colleagues. He would talk about their romantic relationships and significant others. Heather, in your book, you talk about office small talk. Um, I guess this is not appropriate small talk, right? Anything that makes people feel uncomfortable is off limits. And Governor Cuomo doesn't right. seem to realize that. Well, well, think about those family gatherings at Thanksgiving or Christmas. You don't talk about politics and religion. I think those are obvious, which it's actually hard to, not to talk about politics in Cuomo's situation since he's in politics. However, the other added topics would be uh, talk about people's appearance, uh, talk about relationship drama or office gossip, especially to other coworkers. And in Governor Cuomo's case, commenting on other females' appearances, and again, this is just an accusation. I'm just talking about the accusations. We don't know if they're true or not. But making comments on relationship statuses or uh, your sexual preferences are probably not things you want to discuss uh, as office small talk to bond with other people in the workplace. So as we go back to the workplace post-COVID, I think it's important to stick to safe subjects Things like uh, traffic, the stock market, <laughs> weather, um, those Small are all, or even talk. sports, things that you can talk about. Yes. Small, boring talk, but <laughs> safe talk. <laughs> and, you know, obviously, it's different, too, Seth, when you're in a position of leadership, like the governor. You know, when, when you're among your peers, if it's the same members on your team at your level, you might have a little bit more leeway on what you can say. There might be more understanding here. But let's focus on what Cuomo said during his apology yesterday. Let's see if it holds water. I never knew at the time that I was making anyone feel uncomfortable. And if I ever did make uh, people feel uncomfortable, which uh, I now understand that I have, uh, I apologize for it. How can you continue to do your job when you're facing this type of scrutiny? Well, you can. So the, so the voters will vote them out. And Seth brought up a great point, and that is in the corporate world, if you're the CEO of a company, and that's why I think the rules and guidelines in something like the Man's Guide to Corporate Culture is more important than ever. You will be fired and out in a day. The accusations alone are enough to ruin your reputation and the company's reputation. Look at McDonald's, for example. Uh, some Google execs have faced, and, and sometimes these were consensual relationships of uh, sexual allegation and just dating women also in the workplace. And they were fired right away. You can compare and contrast that to, for example, Boeing CEO in the 737 MAX uh, issues and failures they were having. It took the board a year to get rid of the CEO. I'm not saying it was the CEO's fault, that the planes had the problems that they had. But I'm just saying someone like Stephen Easterbrook at McDonald's had a consensual relationship, good, bad, right, wrong, whatever, fired in a day. Mm -hmm. Someone like the CEO of Boeing, it took a year for the board to fire, and there were deaths involved. So yeah. uh, it is a new norm that we live in. Yeah, a much different uh, you know, level of scrutiny for the pub public and private sector. We see that all the time. And, you know, and, and Seth, who would have thought, you know, people used to make fun of Mike Pence because he had the no- Yes, uh, smart man. I know, no meetings with women by themselves. Uh, would, nobody can see it. You know, everybody made fun of him back then, but he was ahead of his time. I mean, this is what you have to do now to, to be safe. No accusations. And my recommendation to all men in corporate business is read Heather's book.